When you think about the emergence of a modern city, it's always a complicated story. And this is certainly true in the case of Hamilton. One has to reflect back to 1812 when George Hamilton bought the Duran family farm. He quickly went about the work of connecting native trade routes and roads which actually form the basis of our modern road network. He set aside land for a courthouse and a jail, and one wonders if he ever contemplated the modern city that would actually exist here one day. Did he consider the harbour and the role that it would play in the city's prosperity? The theme of economic prosperity, public health and environment repeats itself throughout Hamilton's history. Sometimes these things work in harmony and sometimes they competed with one another. But throughout Hamilton's history, the residents and the leaders of the ambitious city always strive to balance these three. Throughout the 19th century, the city did grow and in 1849 reached a population of 10,000. But with such growth comes challenges. And in 1854, 552 of the city's 10,000 inhabitants died from cholera as a result of drinking contaminated water. Fire was also claiming homes at an unprecedented rate because of the lack of access to water and dust was diminishing the quality of life for residents. Because of this, civic leaders commissioned the first drinking water system. And in 1859, the Beach Road pump station was commissioned. What also happened at the same time, but with much less fanfare, was the installation of the sewer system. And with this, wastewater management was a priority. As you can see, a lot has happened in the late 1800s and in the early part of the last century to do with wastewater management. In 1895, the High Court sought to stop the city from discharging untreated raw sewage into the East End outlet. One year later, 1896, was a milestone for Hamilton. Hamilton built its first sewage disposal plant, and it was also the first of its kind in Canada. It was designed and built by Ernest Barrow, the manager of the waterworks. It was located on Wentworth Street, and another identical plant was built on Ferguson Avenue. Both plants were operating by 1898. That's when the city of Hamilton made a real commitment to provide sanitary services to improve the health of its residents. In 1913, the West End Sewage Disposal Works began operation. It was early days, but it was all about protecting the health of residents and the environment. And this was just the beginning. In 1916 to 1924, four disposal plants were in operation. The fifth plant began operations in 1931. By 1934, all sewage and sanitation flowed to the Depew Street Sewage Disposal Works and incinerator. From 1935 to 1955, the City of Hamilton was a manufacturing powerhouse and a key supporter of the war effort providing steel. In 1952, City Council debated a request from the local steel manufacturer, Stelco, to sell the property at Depew Street. That's where the city's main sewage disposal works was housed. The city engineer, W. L. McFall, estimated that the cost to replace the main plant at Depew Street and decommission the Gage Street works would cost $4.3 million. In February of the same year, Ward 4 Alderman Malcolm Klein proposed that the city would undertake a study to see if the solids from wastewater could be used as fertilizer, as some thought that the soils in the Hamilton district needed help as a result of nutrient loss over time. In 1953, the Ontario Municipal Board supported Hamilton's desire to expropriate 33 acres of land immediately south of the water plant on the east side of Woodward Avenue. The land cost was $300,000 for the establishment of a future sewage disposal works. The overall proposed works was estimated to be worth $17 million. In that same year, Hamilton struggled with the growing image of a city that smells and one that was lagging behind in sewage treatment advancements. In fact, the local medical officer of health shared a concern that the province could be preparing to order the city to deal with this issue. Hamilton has a long history in protecting the health of its residents through the wastewater utilities over many decades. But city staff knew that more effort was needed beyond the five basic facilities. Hamilton was a growing community which meant the needs of the city were changing alongside its increasing development and population. 
That's when the city of Hamilton made a commitment to provide sanitary services to improve the health of its residents. From 1960 to 1964, the city began construction of the new Woodward wastewater treatment plant. This meant primary treatment for sewage and digestion of solids in the new plant. It would be a fully centralized wastewater treatment facility. But the Woodward plant is not the same as it was when it was built in 1964. Of the original six main plant features, only four remain today, a long list of upgrades to replace some process and enhance performance of the facility. And all of these investments improve our environmental stewardship in Hamilton. They also reduce our impact on the water and the ways that we rely on water to provide habitat and a source of food for local fish and wildlife. There was more to come. In 1972, secondary biological treatment was added. Following this, in 1980, there was additional secondary treatment built in the South Plant. In the year 2000, the primary capacity was increased with four new clarifiers, and two years later, the aeration systems were upgraded. The City of Hamilton replaced the preliminary treatment process in 2003. Then, the primary treatment system was chemically enhanced in 2010, and more primary clarifiers were added for wet weather treatment. This work reflects millions and millions of dollars in investment by the Hamilton community over time. The program support for these upgrades and additions has been provided by a number of local partners. Some of the initiatives were also jointly funded through our federal and provincial governments. And the successful result? In 2013 alone, nearly 115 billion liters of wastewater was treated at the Woodward plant. To give you a visual, this is about 40% of the volume in the entire basin of Hamilton Harbor. The daily process during that year removed 66,000 kilograms of solids, 1,000 kilograms of phosphorus, and 5,000 kilograms of ammonia every day. The Woodward Wastewater Treatment Plant has operated every day since it was commissioned in 1964. As of October 2014, Woodward Wastewater Treatment Plant performance has reached 105 months of continuous compliance with respect to provincial requirements. That's nearly 3,000 days, a record to truly be proud of. So here we are at 50 years of operation. It's a milestone. Over the next 50 years, there will be increasing changes to the plant that will continue to set the standard for the wastewater industry. As we look back at the past 50 years of our flagship wastewater facility, we need to recognize that it proudly represents environmental protection within our community. It's a facility that adds to the quality of life for all Hamilton residents, but is somewhat an invisible one. The marking of the 50th anniversary of the Woodward plant is a symbol of dedication, determination, and innovative thinking on the part of all staff now and in the past. Looking back, we see how our wastewater system evolved to protect public health and property. Looking forward, we see new challenges that focus on our delisting goals, specifically the final steps in remediation and restoration of our Hamilton Harbor. In 1985, the Hamilton Harbor Remedial Action Plan began when a report was released to document the problematic state of harbor waters. This program was set up as an integrated watershed approach engaging local stakeholders. This is a partnership strategy to implement changes that will reduce our collective impact on the harbor. In 1987, the harbor was then identified as one of 43 areas of concern by our national governments in Canada and the United States. To achieve the lofty objective of delisting Hamilton Harbor as an area of concern, partnerships between all levels of government have combined resources. They have defined specific objectives. The City of Hamilton through Hamilton Water has also responded by delivering a clean harbor program. This serves as the overarching program that tracks, monitors, and reports on each harbor remediation project. This includes Randall Reef, Windermere Naturalization, and the Woodward Upgrade. The largest of the Clean Harbor projects is the Woodward Upgrade. Valued at over $300 million, the Woodward Upgrade project has defined water quality parameters that must be met. So what is the Woodward Upgrade Project? The Woodward Upgrade Project is a series of specific process upgrades taking place at the existing Woodward Avenue wastewater treatment plant. It increases treatment efficiency and reliability and builds on previous investments. 
It's a significant investment of more than $300 million and is supported by both the provincial and federal levels of government through the Green Infrastructure Fund. The objectives are to improve management of wet weather flows, flood mitigative measures, replacement of aging assets, improve overall reliability, and most importantly, increase treatment efficiency to improve water quality. The projects identified have been completed through a formal master planning process and include a new raw sewage pumping station, electrical upgrades, new disinfection works, including chlorine contact tank and upgrades to the Red Hill Creek, and the main investment of a new tertiary treatment process. This investment meets very stringent limits for solids, ammonia, and phosphorus, and we're no longer treating wastewater. We're now reclaiming our water. Through the Woodward Upgrade Project, Hamilton Water will continue to seek innovation to maximize our investment today and into the future. Recent industry-leading innovation in upgrades at the plant include a biogas and cogeneration project, which converts methane gas that is a byproduct of wastewater treatment and historically has been flared as a waste. It's now become a fuel and becomes renewable energy and a revenue source for the city. We'll continue to seek more innovative projects and to maximize our investments. Projects of this size take years to implement. We are on target for completion in early 2020, and all of this leads to one primary goal, a cleaner environment for all. It's been a long journey for Hamilton, from that little port city more than 100 years ago to a thriving city with an urban mix of more than a half million people. But what remains the same is the need for economic prosperity and protection of public health and the environment. A recent survey by the British Journal of Medicine asked 11,000 professionals this question. What was the single top medical advancement in support of human health over the last 150 years? The number one answer was the establishment of the sanitary sewer system. When we look at quality of life for our residents, the management of wastewater can be somewhat invisible. That's because when it is done well, it's an invisible success. <laughs>